Welcome everyone to This Is Armageddon, where we specifically feature Norway and everything Norwegian black metal. In this installment, we are featuring legendary Norwegian black metal band Shooter. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Um, getting their start all the way back in 93, Shooter have carved their own niche in Norway, delivering an unrelenting black metal assault over the course of six full-length albums, with their most recent being Halvigar, which was released last week via Seasons of Mist. Today, we are joined by vocalist bassist Nog. Welcome to the Metal Pit. Appreciate it. Uh, hello. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. Thank you for taking your time. Did I pronounce it? Is it Nog or Nag? Uh, Nog. Nog. Okay, cool. Um, so I'd like to start with a question that I ask of every Norwegian black metal musician that uh, that I have an opportunity to speak with. Um, I've asked the same question to Ishan, Gall, Frost, Grudel, etc. And it relates specifically um, to Norwegian black metal, where we Essentially, we've seen it go from being kind of this reviled and castigated thing back in the early to mid 90s to now being, you know, accepted and praised as Norway's biggest um, cultural export. Uh, its critics at the beginning, you know, are now the same people who are praising it, curating it in museums and all these crazy different things with exhibitions and such things. And over 30 years later, I was kind of curious of what your opinion is of this polar shift towards uh, Norwegian black metal? And do you see it as something positive um, for black metal and Norway to a larger extent? Mm, uh, well, uh, the short answer is that I don't care. Um, I mean, uh, I guess in the late 90s, mm -hmm. uh, I was more into it, uh, more annoyed by, uh, you know, bands showing up playing more listenable music, mm -hmm. uh, music uh, which uh, was made more for for the, the masses than uh, from your inner self, so to say. Um, and then I kind of resigned. Uh, like I'm doing my own thing and uh, I really don't care that much what others are doing. Um, it's kind of a catch-22 answer as well because uh, ideally I think black metal should be you know, pure, purely underground. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to think that uh, the music Shooter is making is uh, it's the music we like, uh, and it is. We would never make uh, you know to change a riff to make it more listenable. We we, we play whatever we like, and mm -hmm. if other people like likes it, that, that's uh, that's cool. Uh, otherwise, we don't care. Uh, but uh, you know. And um, none of the bands would have gotten this far uh, hadn't it been for some of the commer commercialization of it. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, you know, it goes both ways. Um, I, say, I think kind of the atmosphere and and the scene and was much better in the 90s. It was different. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. I'm getting older as well. So. <laughs> yeah, well, aren't we all? Yeah, I guess uh, you answered there. It's kind of a catch-22, bit of a weird situation. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, definitely the answer I expected from you and from Shooter. So uh, thank you for that. Um, so this kind of brings up, I guess, specifically what you were talking about, you know, kind of staying true to the music, uh, Shooter's music. Um, and I would kind of define, you know, Helviger as four descriptors, evil, hateful, primitive, and honest. I think those are probably the four main descriptors that come to mind, you know, after spending the album, spinning the album several times. Um, in 2023, I think those four descriptors can only be applied to a small number of bands, you know, coming out of Norway. Of course, you know, there are many bands experimenting with 
within the realm of black metal. You know, you have like Dark Throne doing different things, Enslaved, obviously going more progressive, Borknagar as well, Dottam's Guard, Satyricon. Um, but then you have bands like 1349, Gorgoroth, Mayhem, Immortal, Shooter, that uh, are continuing to kind of carry that original black metal standard that was erected way back in the early 90s. Um, how important is it to you, would you say, to keep the identity of Shooter consistent as it relates to kind of both the trueness of your music and the overall image of the band that you're projecting? Oh, well, it's uh, it's uh, 100% essential. Uh as uh, me and Raglen both uh, have said before, uh, if we start to to make music, uh, which would you know, uh, for example, uh, if we were to play the death metal, uh, it wouldn't be for sure. We we would have to either start a side project for it or uh, yeah. So whenever we uh, leave our path. Mm -hmm. Uh, we will we will want to use it for sure. So at the whenever me and Raglan are, you know, both of us are turning this direction. Uh, there's no more shooter. It's over. Okay, it's funny that you, you that your answer because my next question was, um, you know, have you ever been tempted by significant change or experimentation? And obviously, you just answered that. If that were to occur, you would uh, yeah, well, take it. To I, I can answer that as well because uh, yes, uh, I mean through the years when we have been uh, rehearsing, uh, of course we we have uh, both covered other bands, of course, mm -hmm. and also you know making riffs and like a super groovy heavy death metal thing or like a ultra slayer uh, riff. Mm -hmm. uh, we enjoy doing that when we rehearse, and but whenever we put together uh, a song, uh, we are more uh, we we are thinking like, is w will this riff represent should? So right, yeah. okay, yep. And I'm curious how the split with Anti Christian back in 2020 impacted the band, and maybe more specifically the writing and outcome of Halvagar. Was he instrumental? in any of the compositions of new shooter material or is it uh not really affecting the outcome of that album at all no the thing with uh Ante Christian, uh i mean he, he's been with shooter for about 20 years uh and he's uh he's uh contributed uh, a lot during those 20 years mm -hmm. uh when uh, writing music um uh, it's it's been mostly Draglen. Uh, it's a little bit different from album to album. Um, in the beginning, it was me and Draglen sitting together making like most most of it. Uh, but actually, on Antilive, that's more or less, I would say, the only album where Antikristan was uh, playing a bigger part. Mm -hmm. Because uh, most of Antelie was uh, created in the rehearsal room, so uh, so he was he was there when the riffs were made or uh, a bunch of them. Um, for uh, Helveger, uh, we kind of uh, went back to scratch again, uh, started to make uh, riffs and parts, partly songs, uh, before the rehearsal and um and tried to you know uh complete them in the rehearsal room uh so so what happened was that uh we, we quickly decided uh figured out that uh Ante, Ante Christian, uh he he wanted to play something different uh than me and Ravlin. uh so we did struggle with that for some time before we eventually, you know, we were hitting the wall all the time. We, we, we were at a standstill. Um, so, yeah, uh, we decided that we had to uh, separate uh, from him. And uh, and then uh, Draglin was uh, made made the music for Helveger. Uh, 
But to answer your question is if uh, it affected uh, Helveger, uh, no, it did not at all. Um, the music for Helveger, or many of the songs were already made. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, to be honest, uh, it just, uh, it, it made the completion of the album much quicker, actually. Cool, so. cool. And um, <clears throat> you guys got John Rice. Uh, in on drums now. Did that happen fairly quickly, or is that something that happened more recently? After the oh, the thing, uh, the thing after uh, Antic Sun was that we decided uh, not to rush anything, right? Yeah. Um, and but we we were uh, determined to get uh, a really really good drummer. Uh, we we had uh, spoken to John Rice before. Uh, so uh, after some uh, some uh, talk with some friends, uh, we decided to just call John and ask, and he wants to to play on the album. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was surprising to me because obviously he's known for Uncle Acid and the Deadbeats, and yeah. I had no idea he could perform to such extreme levels. Um, no, uh, to be honest, it was uh, thirty forty nine who who told us to to talk wow. to him in the first place. So right. Cool. Cool. He, he already he he, he, he played uh, I don't know how many quite a few shows with thirty forty nine as well. So. Interesting. Cool. Um, so the album, you know, after again listening many times over the last couple of weeks, uh, it doesn't stray too far from you know Shooter's traditional. Uh, tradition of mixing things up as it relates to tempos and speed, you know, where sometimes you slow things down. Sometimes you pick up on a thrash groove. Um, to me, this is most evident on Gods of Black Blood, which, you know, has some definite mood swings, so to speak. You know, in one moment, it goes from total unrelenting, like war metal-like extremity. Um, and then the next moment to something really swirling, vertical inducing, and groovy. Um, it's a really, I think, an incredible song uh, that to me recalls, you know, some the greatness of something like uh, Gorgoroth's Carving a Giant. Um, you know, there's certainly more atmospherics in that particular song than I'm used to from Shooter. Um, and I'm just interested to know how that particular song came about. Was that a collaboration between you and Droglin? Um, did Droglin write that? Did you write that one? And also, you know, after watching the video, I'm curious to know the meaning behind that particular song. Well, first of all, uh, uh, it's too bad that Evelyn isn't here now because uh, he should really answer most of that question. Um, but what I can say is that uh, 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 he's the one who made the song. Uh, and I think on the whole Hello Year album, uh, the way Dragon made the songs this time is is new because first of all he did most of it himself mm -hmm. instead of being me and him in a room physically playing together. So so he was uh, recording uh, uh, guitars uh, with the uh, uh, Do, uh, and then so he recorded like one guitar and then a second track and a third track and fourth track. So he was playing more with uh, using several several guitars, and uh, that's the first time we we done that. Uh, on all all the albums, we we made a song, mm -hmm. recorded in the studio, and in the studio, uh, most of the you know second guitars have, has been laid down or made. So this time around, everything was uh, was uh, recorded in advance to you know to see whatever fit together so I, I think that that kind of answers uh, why there are more melodies and more uh, maybe more guitar things happening in not only the, that song but uh, I think most of the songs right and uh, the meaning behind the song you know the video is quite interesting um, it's it's actually a fucking awesome video probably one of the best videos in a long time in the black metal scene um how did that come about and what uh what particular meaning is behind that song yeah well thank you um 
I think uh, the meaning behind the song, uh, if you're talking about the lyrics, uh, it's up to to the reader, I guess, to to decide for themselves. Uh, what I can say is that uh, uh, for me, the lyrics uh, means that uh, uh, it's it's more fuck you to everyone and we are supreme. Uh, yeah, I uh, when I reviewed the album, sorry to interrupt. Um, I I uh, I dropped a note in there that thought uh, that said uh, I feel like this is in some way autobiographical, like Suter are the gods of black blood. That's the way I took the meaning behind it, and maybe yeah, that's... you're you're actually not uh, that wrong about that because uh, I think when I wrote uh, wrote the lyrics, um, actually on many lyrics, I'm I'm thinking that I'm picturing us, you know, doing whatever the lyrics are about, right, and. Um, and I also was Sideman was part of writing this lyrics. Sideman thought of Mortal Man. Regarding the video, uh, that was uh, a new experience. Uh, we've never recorded a video before. Um, and it was season missed to uh, just ask us, like, do you want to make a video? And we can ship someone to know a way to do it. And uh, we were a bit, well, uh, what to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I had a quick talk with uh, yeah, Dragon, of course, uh, but uh, also uh, people like close to us and uh, ask them, like, uh, what do you think about this and any ideas? So we told Season Mist that, uh, yes, uh, we would very much like to do a video, but uh, no special effects, no. Uh, uh, Cutting, no, uh, I don't know. Uh, we want to make it uh, like our way: uh, snow, forest, mountains, fire. So uh, I just uh, uh, put on my skis and went around to to find some some places, <laughs> and and uh, that's basically how it happened. So, awesome. Uh, yeah. Very cool, and it, um, it was done. It was everything was done actually in five days. Uh, from, oh wow! Yeah, so it it was uh, it wasn't rushed, but uh, it was uh, like on a really tight schedule. Right. Yeah, it's uh it's amazing how many views it's racked up in, you know, just over yeah. two months. Like it's a quarter million views. Yeah, it's, which... it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think I think the 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 cool thing with the video is to to read the the like for me it's the funny reviews or the funny comments. Uh, those yeah. are, like <laughs> the ones who makes my day. So, yeah. yeah, there's some very positive comments in there, and uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to I, I don't know if this is correct, but to me, Helviger is kind of a, an album that. Uh, Reminds me of Gorgoros, Ad Majorum, uh, Glorium, Satanus. Am I saying it? Ad Majorum, Satanus, Glorium. In mm -hmm. that, uh, in that, I think that's the album that really kind of took Gorgoros from, you know, obviously they're still an underground band, but from being, um, you know, a, a, a fans band to a band that, you know, other metalheads who may not know the genre or may not have known the band could get into um and I, I think it was kind of a pinnacle moment in their career that brought them you know more exposure not in a commercial way but just in a way that there was more traction you know they had the video for carving a giant which was a really cool fucking video yeah. um similar to you know gods of black bud um i i know the answer to this already from some of your answers earlier but did you guys approach helviger at all you know with perhaps the idea of being able to reach a wider audience. And I'm not saying it again in a commercial sense, but in a sense that you want more people to be exposed to your music. Um, you know, was this the idea behind the video, um, the album art, which is a bit different for, um, for Tudor, where it's not, you know, your traditional Norwegian black metal album. It is a bit more 
artistic, so to speak. Um, was there any forethought at all? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> not at all. Um, actually, on this album, uh, we have to go a little bit back to the recording process uh, because it was, uh, of course, COVID happened uh, just when we were supposed to start recording. Mm -hmm. So we had to to do everything uh, ourselves and together with uh, Paul uh, from his uh, he has North Waves Studios. Uh, and he's, he's a friend and he, he played actually, actually I played guitar and shooter um, 23 years ago or something. Um, so this time we could spend like all the time uh we wanted uh which has never happened before so we were extremely well i had ocd on you know everything uh like with with that i mean i i was determined to to work on the drums to work on the guitar sound to try stuff uh, and I insisted to use, uh, or at least to try, like a uh, Marshall JSM 800 and uh, Metal Zone, which everyone, of course, is laughing of. But uh, for me, that's that's. Uh, I, I think that's just like it's a definition of black metal. Um, so so we we could spend a lot of time, you know, trying different sounds, different amps, different whatever. Uh, which made the album the way it is. And also, uh, I think since me and Draglin, uh, we were really hands-on. I mean, it was Paul who turned the knobs, but he's also kind of part of us. I mean, he's, he's been friends with us for 25 years and knows whatever we're thinking. So um, so that that's why and how we got the sound. And uh, for me, it's uh, actually the first album uh with a sound that represents shooter except from desert mm -hmm. uh because but to be honest uh on desert northern hell we were lucky uh it's it's just like that uh um on the other albums uh of course we have been part of, of setting the sound but uh with a limited time and uh not uh, we don't know too much about it uh it's uh it's uh the results has been uh as as it is uh while on this one it, yeah, we'll work much more on it um regarding the the cover art um that took uh 180 de degree direction from what uh, my vision was. Uh, I had actually fixed like a Xerox from the 90s, like an old big three ton machine. <laughs> uh, and the plan was uh, was actually to, to make the front cover the way you made the demo tapes in the 90s. Uh, but then um, uh, Laura, uh, created like the first sketch uh, and she she drew like the the sketch of a hair and uh, we we thought that uh, okay uh, this this has a deeper meaning and uh, yeah we continue to work down that path path so oh. so the the cover art was uh, was uh, drawn by Laura Nardelli and uh, Jonas uh, Svensson, uh, uh, he's done uh, like most Tormentor, Mayhem stuff. Uh, he was like uh, putting everything together and he also made the, the, the inlays and, and the layout. Um, and yes, it's it's different uh, from uh, what we've done before, and uh, but uh, again, uh, we thought it it's uh, it's a front cover with a with a meaning actually. So, cool. uh, and especially if when you open, uh, uh, 
uh, the LP uh, with the kind of the doors thing. That's uh, your open uh, more more meaning, I guess, right? Yeah, you yeah. you you enter uh, the underworld or into well, hell hell is there. Uh, so and also the title Hellvegger can be translated to the road to hell or the road to hell, whatever you prefer. Um, sure. so yeah um so i guess in august uh my partner and i will be traveling to norway for the beyond the gates festival in bergen it's unfortunate that uh you guys aren't uh performing for this year but uh, uh will you be there at least checking the show mm -hmm. out or <laughs> uh i doubt it i i have an invite but uh uh yeah. it it would be really cool to to go there to to meet up with uh with other bands i know and friends yeah um but uh yeah, we'll see cool and do you have any any festival shows coming up um that people yeah. should know about yeah we're, we're playing in Midgard's blot in norway um that's uh also in august Awesome. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then actually in 2023, that's that's the only festival uh, uh, from now on. And the the, the next one is in uh, Mexico Metal Fest in, in November. And then, and then we have a whole uh, Latin America tour. Okay, cool. Um, North America, can we expect to see you guys at some point? Uh, the last time... I saw you was actually in Montreal at uh, the Mesa de Mort festival mm -hmm. back in like 2013 or 14. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Some time ago. Uh, yeah. yeah, I remember that gig. Um, and uh, I, I hope to call and come back to North America soon. Uh, we, we played in Atlanta now uh, uh, in November, I guess. Um, so now it would be cool to do like a, a be a tour to do several gigs. Um, I understand it's it's really hard to to make it happen. So that's all yeah. probably why it hasn't well, happened. Fingers crossed, man. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Uh, well, thank you for your time. I think we're almost out of time here. Unfortunately, I don't have the uh, the unlimited version of uh, of Zoom. Um, so I just got a notification that we might be uh, cut off shortly. Um, so thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, all the success in the world with Helviger. And uh, I hope to see, well, actually, will there be another video? Are you guys planning? A... Yeah, it will. Yeah? yeah. It was actually recorded before Gaza Black Blood. And it's recorded by me, and myself, and I. So it will awesome. be different. Uh, can, you, can you reveal what song yet? Uh, yes, it will be the title song, Fairway. Awesome, awesome, yeah, very cool. I'm looking forward to that. Thanks again, Nog. I appreciate your time. Thank you, and I uh, appreciate you taking your time to, to talk to me. That's cheers.